Well, today we have a Sega Dreamcast. Although not the one that's sitting up on my uh, table. This is an old sperm one that I had from quite a while ago. You may notice the front. Missing all the ports. I tried to fix it myself and it all went wrong. So basically I kept this as a spare Dreamcast. So what I figured we'd do is in this video is I'm just going to take it apart and give you a little tour of the internals of the Sega Dreamcast. And so we have uh, the four screws out the bottom and we have our modem. Uh, these are just the tools I'm using obviously, although this uh, crosshead is probably the best one. Right, so now let's move on to lifting the cover. Simple as that, there's the components. So starting from the bottom we have the missing controller ports, the battery which holds the time, there's a small fan here connected to this little PCB board, um, a small light, there's a small light there, there's your battery, You've got a switch here, simple on and off switch. It's always a good idea actually just to leave that switch down because it just discharges the capacitors on the power supply. If your Dreamcast keeps rebooting itself um, with certain games, for instance this Dreamcast had the same problem where if I play uh, Sonic Adventures 1, every time you'd start the game it would just drop back to the menu. These pins down here, which I can zoom into, um, over time they can get dirty. I'd assume it's from oxidization of the contacts, I could be totally wrong there, but if you clean those contacts and make sure that there's a good strong connection between all the pins, that, that will reduce the chances significantly. And so there is the power supply. And the best part is it's not a proprietary connector, it just uses the, as I say, figure of eight connector. Which makes life a heck of a lot easier when you lose the uh, cable. Just for anyone else interested, there's the back of the PCB. Let's see if we can get a good focus on that. Yeah, I'd say it's nicely made. So here we have the GD-ROM, the Dreamcast that I've got over on the uh, table had a massive weird problem where the disk drive that came with it would make a horrible whining noise and that was only when I used um, burnable recordable media so I was fortunate enough to have this Dreamcast and swapped it so this this drive that you see here is from the new Dreamcast works great but it just means that when you play with burnt games it makes a, like, quite a loud noise There are two screws, <laughs> I took just one out before, pop straight up, it's got a connector on the back, out of frame there, so it's got one connector, I would actually assume that's a SCSI, just be very careful as well because when you do lift this out, this whole top bit comes off, and I'll show you the mechanics side, I'll just have to disconnect the ribbon cable, I'll close the blind for this bit because it's quite uh, small, but there's the bottom of the GD-ROM, so you can see there's a geared system, if I remember rightly the Saturn had something very similar but I believe it was even worse so obviously by gently turning the the gears here you can see that the um, reed head moves very smoothly although they are quite noisy and then one solution is if your Dreamcast does sound like it's scraping like <coughs> everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about just lubricate the gears here and the shaft and those uh, bearings will be noticeably quieter so here we have the uh, controller ports, obviously as you may remember from before I removed them um, but you've got the battery, the LED, uh, that's the connection for the fan. One interesting uh, bit to mention about is this resistor, apparently if you twist it over it can uh, bypass issues or prevent problems with the controller port. And there's the back. So you might just be able to see this. Okay, so we are now on to the motherboard section. Let's get this uh, tray out and reveal the magic behind the Dreamcast. Move the screws, out it comes, and hey, look at that. And just in case there's anyone that's interested, there's the sticker in the corner. And so let's pull the board out. Let's have a look at this beauty. I'm just going to watch that 
power switch there. Okay, and so here is the motherboard. This is the magic behind the Dreamcast. So let's go into detail about uh, the various components. Uh, the first glimpse, I would assume that that is the CPU. That's be the GPU. That's your memory. And of interest, the BIOS is here. You can replace the BIOS ROM with a unlocked BIOS. It is clearly marked as a Sega chip, and I have no idea how well you can see that. And so here we have the Sega 1999 at the top, which is really weird because the timer goes back a year on mine. Zoom out so you can see various uh, air locations on the motherboard. But to be honest with you, it is pretty amazing for its size, uh, you know, how good it is. And actually just doing this now makes me want to uh, play on my Dreamcast. Looking more like a Dreamcast now. Let's just get the final bits put back on. And there we are, it is all back together. It takes quite a while to record it, but uh, hopefully the time won't be too long. So thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.